Why two no go to one? That's right, I'm making a fuel tank. That's right, I'm making a fuel tank. Hello there. It's another workshop episode about a V10, and not motorbikes. Why? Because I have no consistency, and I'm not very good at making videos. In today's episode, this happens. And on the last bit of inter-episode housekeeping, over the months I've had several people suggest names for this, or tell me that I should name it. Now personally, I think all the suggestions have been absolutely rubbish. So I think it's only fitting that I do it myself. So how do we do this? So this is a Nissan Patrol, also called a Poo Troll to weirdos. And this is a V10 engine. Poo Troll V10. Maybe you could call it Poo 10. So naturally, its name is now Vladimir. So welcome, Vladimir. Anyway, today is going to be taking the fuel tank out of this so I can use all its internal gubbins and put it in a fuel tank that I'm going to make myself so it'll probably leak like a sieve and cause many explosions. So as I anticipate that it's going to be quite difficult to make a fuel tank for the first time, I'm going to cut to the chase where the fuel tank is already out of the car. You can see it right there. Spoiler. But here's some stuff that happened in the meantime. It's quite difficult. Firstly, you have to deal with the lovely task of taking out the entire rear subframe. This is basically everything that's connecting the wheels to the body, and it's a blessing and a curse. Firstly, taking it all out as one unit is not that difficult, just very tedious. And if you want to do it properly, which I don't, it'll end up taking you seven hours, and you have to take out all the shocks. So I've done it the lazy way. Now to make matters worse, because I've been pretty lazy with this, I haven't removed the shocks, because it's full of airlines and things I don't want to take off just yet. And naturally, they want to spread wider than a crack baby mother's legs. So I've had to retain them a little bit with this little strap, while I lower it down. But first, I've got to take the tank out. Now you might be asking yourself, why have I gone through all the hassle of taking this fuel tank out when I'm definitely not going to use it in that patrol over there that you can't see? Well, for some reason or another, this thing has two fuel pumps. Now these are the low pressure ones that feed into the fuel rail, which are then compressed and injected by those PD injectors we talked about in episode two or one, I can't remember. Now, as I'm sure you read the title of this video, I'm not using this tank. I'm going to be making my own, but first I need to take some measurements, mostly the diameter of these holes here so that I know what to cut into the new tank I'm making so I can transplant these fuel tanks across into the new one, as well as all the gubbins we might find inside. So I just did all that work to take one measurement and remove two fuel pumps. Hundred and twenty millimeters for those of you playing at home. And for my notes later when I'm doing post processing and I've forgotten. Now what I'm gonna have to do is come up with an alternate arrangement to this weird little locking ring thing. 
because this is going to be quite difficult to manufacture myself because these things are basically an off-the-shelf item that they've bonded in from factory and then they lock it in with this ring so my plan is similar to the Nissan Patrol one I'm going to have a ring of holes around here which will then clamp a plate onto the top of this pump which will then use the original seal that you see here and as long as I can seal it from the bottom there'll be no issues with any leakage around here and I'll still get the same clamping force but for the time being let's see how long it takes to put a rear subframe back into a Touareg I'm guessing quite a long time Now seeing as I've already given away the plot of this video, let me explain to you why I'm going to make my own fuel tank. You might notice a couple of things. Two in fact. Now these are related to the fuel pump and internal gubbins of this massive weirdly shaped fuel tank. And what I originally planned to do before I knew about these two was to just transplant this lot and all of the internals into this fuel tank. But that one appears to only have one that complicates matters. The other thing is that that tank looks rubbish and it smells of petrol so I'm not going to use it. And I've concluded that the best course of action is to just make one seeing as I've got all the machines to do it and I've also never made one before so I'd quite like to learn how. So why not do it at my own expense so everyone can watch me do things in a terrible way as usual. Now being someone who is slightly familiar with CAD I've done this and this is going to be near enough exactly 100 litres of capacity for this V10 Patrol. But why don't you just put a stupidly oversized tank and have 200 litres and an unlimited range? Well, on computer controlled cars, that's a bit of a stupid idea. Because most of the time, if you change the fuel capacity, your computer is going to do funky things. Like always be wrong about your range calculations or fuel economy calculations. And I'm not sure about in this case, but I feel like that could affect the fueling of my car in some way. Probably not, but I'd rather not risk it. Plus, I don't need more than 100 litres of fuel. Fight me below. So to help me on my travels, I bought this. Not a blue kayak. Come and pick it up. How many times do you need to be told? A lovely sheet of stainless steel. Now this sheet of stainless steel is quite expensive. I just bought a standard sized sheet and it was just over $300. And it has these properties. That's what it's called. That's how thick it is. And that's how big it is. And by my calculations, I have enough material to mess up three times before it becomes a problem. So let's see if I mess up enough times for it to become a problem. If you know what you're looking at, you'll know that that is so frustratingly close, it's not even funny. It's like redesign time. So my plan here is to partially slice through all of these little cornery bits, basically the fold lines. What that'll do is then, instead of bending one and a half mil stainless steel, I'm only bending, say, half mil stainless steel, and I'll be able to get a very tight and very accurate bend, which I can then weld up later on.
Now this strange flat piece of metal is now starting to look slightly tank-like. So if you can visualise it, this is the bottom half. You can pretend there's a plane drawn through the middle of the tank. And this is the bottom of it. And that's about it. It's either a fuel tank or a bath for three swans. And the bending and tacking has worked out absolutely perfectly. If I run my hand around this top edge here, it doesn't catch and you can barely feel any height difference at all. The only one I can feel is here, but that's just a burr on a corner. So yeah, it's good. Now the reason I'm making this in two halves is because there's stuff that I have to put in here. Now when a fuel tank is sloshing around like this, with 100 litres of fuel, then obviously that's a lot of weight to be moving around. Cut that down to half a tank of fuel, and you've got a lot of mass wobbling around with joy. And the purposes of baffles are to divide the tanks and limit the amount of fuel that can move from one side to the other in a short amount of time. And I'm going to put two of these in to divide the tank roughly into thirds and provide me with enough space to put my fuel pumps in. Now you don't really need to think that much about the flow characteristics of a fuel tank baffle. What you have to do is just make sure they're not so restrictive that they're restricting any flow to any of the pumps, but you have to make sure that they are restrictive enough to stop a massive amount of fuel from here smashing into the side of the tank over there. It's time for learning again. Did you know fuel is not the only thing inside a fuel tank? That's right. I am too. As well as all these other things. Now all of this stuff is what can only be described as overcomplicated Volkswagen. And most of this stuff is to compensate for the weird shape of the Volkswagen fuel tank. But to avoid any risks of weird errors and problems when the car's actually running, I'm going to reuse everything, regardless of whether it's obsolete or not. Now the advantage of doing this is that I don't have to think about what I'm doing and I don't have to modify much either. I have these two fuel pump things that are connected together anyway. I have these caps which go in the top of the fuel tank and then I have a whole series of levers, knobs and dials that I'll never fully understand. Now the good thing about this is that there's a weird little Volkswagen bracket in the fuel tank that connects everything together. For example, this pump locks into there with a quarter turn. This thing slots in one of those things. And this weird thing goes in the other one. Basically that times two. So all I have to do is find a way to mount this weird little ring thing so that I've got enough space for everything and then design my baffles to go around it. And it's not as easy as you might think because there's not that much space to work with. Now while this whole tank might be the same volume as the original one over there it's in a much more compact form factor so I'm probably going to have to be a bit creative with how some of these pickup tubes are oriented. But anyway, I'm going to do that either in a montage or a snap of a finger. Now after much faffing around, I've got it kind of laid out how it's going to be. These two things here are fuel pickups, and they have to be at a certain angle in the fuel tank. They've got three legs, which means that as long as all three legs are touching the bottom of the fuel tank, they're in the correct position. And I've tweaked this little aligning rod on both of them, so that they're now located in the right place, and there's a pickup on each side. So it's still going to get fuel if it's at an angle, regardless of... Don't know if you can see that on camera, you probably can't. This is a little float level thing, same as you got in your toilet. That is clear of anything, and when it's at the bottom, obviously, it's touching the bottom of the tank. There's another one here in the middle. I assume these are because on the original tank, it was possible for one side of the tank to go dry. So if the pump detects that it's dry, it stops pumping fuel and relies solely on the other one. That's just a guess, don't know. Anyway, the rest of the stuff is just a garbage amount of 
fuel lines and things like that. And aside from that, I'm quite happy with it. Now all I need to do is make a few tabs. I'll probably weld them in so that I can leave these quarter turn bosses in there permanently. And then I can just quarter turn these, pull them out, and that's it ready to go. Also means in the future it's going to be very easy to replace these without having to do something stupid like remove the tank. And with the top on, probably about 50 mil, 60 mil until I reach the top of those pumps again. So plenty of room. The only thing that might be a struggle are getting the hoses to these top caps. But that'll be easy enough. If I can just extend the hoses if I have to, then that's fine.